Hello and welcome back to Green Hill Junction. Uh, so we're up the village end of the layout because it's time to start the scenery up here. And the first thing I want to do is put in back scenes. Um, I think when I first thought of this layout I wasn't going to put in back scenes because I've put the tables really close to the wall. They're only like a hand width from the wall. Thankfully there is a gap. Um, and I want to get well, back scenes all the way around of it. Basically what I'm working on is somewhere from about there, along here, along this wee bit, jump over that silly little corner that I put in, and along the back of the station. Yeah. So, uh, what have I got? Well, I've got um, two of the Gage Master ones. So I've got, um, I think it's what, Town back scene, yeah, and uh, Fields, I think. Open Fields. And they say that they don't um, they don't join together. They, they kind of do, and I'll show you what I mean later on. Uh, but I can easily sort that out with a bit of scenery. So the plan is to build um, hardboard backings with a frame, with a pine frame, and then I've got uh, right angle brackets to attach them to the the bottom of the main the main backboards. Uh, but uh, it's difficult to explain without seeing what I'm doing. So we'll move on into. Yeah, what's became my workshop, i.e. the spare bedroom because it's minging outside um, and I'll, uh, I'll show you what the, the general plan is. Alright, welcome to the temporary workshop. Uh, so this is uh, what I've got, steam or hardboard, um, I think about three sheets of them and some pine bracing, ten and a half thick by I think it's 45 wide. Now, there's the back scenes, so if I was if I didn't have an upper level, I could quite happily half that board and get, I think it's four back scenes on. Because I've got the upper level, you know, I'm having to take that into consideration, so I'm actually having to cut the boards with an extra bit at the bottom. So this will be the bit that attaches to the baseboards. Uh, the, the constru uh, it'll attach to the side of the lower baseboards and then the back scene gets glued on. So because of this, if I did it lengthways, I would just have a big bit of waste there. So what I'm going to do is cut smaller boards all the way down the width of this and then attach them together with a pine frame. So there'll be one pine batten that runs all the way along the back of the hardboard boards. And then at every join there'll be a pine support. So what I'm hoping is by having the smaller bits of hardboard that will be more um, secure and less flexible uh, uh, with the pine acting as bracing. And um, to attach it all together I'm going to go a wee bit different as well because the wood's so thin, so you think 10.5 plus 3, 13.5, it's not really that thick. So what I'm going to do is I have the good old Gorilla glue, uh, so the pine will get lathered than that. Uh, and I've also got myself a staple gun and some 12mm uh, staples. So the plan is to quite simply glue it and staple it together, which I think will be fine because it's not going to be overly heavy and to be honest I don't think I'd get a screw small enough that wouldn't poke out through the wood. So we'll see what happens, I've never seen this done before, I've never done it this way before so um, if it all goes horribly wrong I'll show you in the video and we'll just move on to something else. So. Got a lot of cutting to do, um, so we'll get on with that and, uh, and then come back when it's getting on into construction. Right, so this is what I was trying to explain earlier, earlier the uh, the frame. So this is for the, the back of the village, so along there. So it's 1.65 metres long and now I've cut the boards to size. So the idea is that the boards will just... Set in the frame like that, glued and um, stapled. Obviously those middle ones are half and half and my idea is to just put a staple connecting all three things together. So, pretty simple construction. Absolute pain in the, you know what, cutting this hardboard is so flexible and to be honest, I mean this isn't the ideal working in here. So, um, aye, it's going to take me a while. But um, that's the idea, and then there'll be um, where are they? Ah. These hinge pieces. 
So that will go So that will go like that, so there will be two screws holding that on to that and then there will be two screws there that will go into the uh, baseboard. All going now. <laughs> so, see what happens. But anyway, right, quick update before the glue sets on me. Um, right, stapling's not working. That's the staple gun on full power. And the staples are still sticking out, which is no good. So I'm going to have to try and remove them or just hammer them in. Uh, and I cannot be bothered hammering them in all the way along this. So I'm just going for the good old loads of glue method um, and hope for the best. So here's hoping. So come back once the glue is dried and see if we've actually got some sort of structure. Right, there we go. Hopefully one board done. My usual bodged method of uh, glue it, weigh it down with canned food and hope for the best. Uh, to be honest, I mean the Gorilla glue is really good. It should stick pretty well. Uh, and I'll probably put some staples in the back of it just where the the sort of upper battens join the big long bottom button. Pretty comfortable, stay together. Um, some of you might have noticed that this board's a little bit short. This board's a little bit short, just because it was a it was a leftover piece, um, and I figured might as well use it instead of wasting it and cutting or cutting one of those boards, which are the big proper size boards. So I just used the leftover piece, cut it to just about size, and there should be enough to to hold on. Um, but I think time will tell. Leave this to dry fit the brackets to it and see how it fits onto the, the actual baseboards. Worst comes to the worst, chop it up, use it as firewood. So I'll uh, come back in here once it's all dried and see what we've got. Right, uh, quick progress update. Uh, my bodge seems to have worked. Um, the glue has set. Um, what I've done is I have put in some staples along each join just to hold it all together um, and I have taken out the, the two staples that were in there give that a wee sand and I'll get rid of that but I mean it's uh, it's pretty solid it's quite lightweight so um, no, I'll take that um, I'll get the brackets on stick it onto the the side of the, the baseboard check it for size and See where we go for there, but eh, I'm uh, quite pleased that that, um, that bodge has worked out into a half decent board. So eh, let's get it fitted and uh, see what it looks like. Hey, right, welcome back. Uh, so the boards are coming on well. I've got one more to build. Uh, so now I'm moving on to planning where I'm going to put uh, the respective back scenes. And I've realised one thing is that um, over in this corner here, the majority of the boards that I'm building are going to be covered by the hill. Uh, because if you look at this corner, so this is roughly where I want the, the tunnel mouth to be for the incline going up. Now that comes, I mean these are roughly placed, but these will be roughly where they are, so that comes pretty much close to the top of those trees and then I'm going to have a hill going off which is probably going to come up to the height of the the boards I'm building so it looks kind of natural going up into a hill and then it's going to come down really really gradually this side because it needs to these trains need clearance to get up so you know you're going to have an incline kind of like that or a hill Kind of like that, and you can see that's coming along the top of those trees. So what I'm thinking is, I've got a relatively clear bit of blue sky there. I've got a relatively clear bit of blue sky there. And Gauge Master, which these back scenes came from, do a they just do a sky set, um, which is three boards of 
blue sunny sky. Like that. Well, not like that, that is it. So as you can see, there's like a good bit of blue sky there, and there's a good bit of blue sky there. So what I'm thinking is if I buy that, and use that to fill in these gaps, obviously before the scenery goes in, it's going to look, well, horrendous. But once I build a hillside up there, and then a hillside down there, I think I can quite happily link these in. And it means I've got the whole countryside scene with the farm going along there, which looks good. And then that one will turn just there and come along here to probably around about there. And then we'll meet, I'll move that one obviously across there to meet. And that means I've got a town scene going along there and then ending probably just towards the end of the platforms. Maybe about there. And then it means, uh, you know, it gives a bit of perspective for the station that, you know, it's a big station, so there, there's maybe it's the other side of the town is the other side of the station, or there's another town that can use the station, sort of thing. So I think that's going to work out. Like I say, it's going to look, it's going to look daft to start with. Um, but I think by the time I do the scenery in here, It'll tie in really nicely because all I need is a bit of blue sky there and a bit of blue sky there. I don't, I don't want to hide all these pictures. I got these pictures because they look good. So yeah, plan evolves as it goes along, but that's that's, uh, that's pretty much where we're at. So um, get the last board done, get them installed, get pictures stuck on, and then uh, right, see what we've got. Okay, welcome back, and that's the. Uh, the board's fitted, or test fitted, um, where I need them to go, and it all went quite well. Need the wife's help to hold them in place while I crawled a bit under the tables to um, screw the uh, the screws in. Um, there's just trains and stuff everywhere, so that we had like that area clear to work in. Um, but I'm getting better at this joinery stuff. So it's, uh, it's a wee bit of height difference there, um, but they all join up quite nicely. Bar uh, that one there, but stick a wee bit of wood in there, and it'll uh, it'll hold it flat and just put a once I stick one of the scenes across that, you're never going to notice. So uh, hi. If all the boxes in, it makes it feel smaller like this, but I'm sure it'll make it feel a bit more, well, it'll make it feel bigger once I actually get pictures on it. Um, so that's the next stage. So now that the, the test fitting has done, I've got screw holes that I can aim for next time. Um, take these off, get the back scenes stuck on, and then reinstall them with the, with the back scenes on, and that's that. So, um, show you how I'm going to stick them on, what I'm going to use, and then we'll uh, reinstall them and see what it's like at the end. Okay, I have uh, stuck on the, the first set of back scenes. Um, I am using what Gage Master recommend for the back scenes, which is this view glue back scene adhesive for wrinkle-free and tear-free application of paper and laminates. Okay, whatever you say. Um, looks decent from a distance on camera, which is good. Um, because you come in closer, uh, there's some wrinkles there, um, the wrinkle there, and to be honest, my join's a bit dodgy. But you know what? I'm rubbish at wallpapering. I get my father-in-law around if the wife insists on getting any wallpapering done. So, hey ho. Um, what I'll do is we'll go into the other room where I've got the other board set up, i.e. this board. And uh, I'll show you how to use it, the glue that is, um, or how it recommends to be used. But I might try something different and if it all goes horrible or wrong, so be it. 
Um, so aye, let's get set up in the other room. Okay, here we are set up in the other room with the other bit of uh, of vaccine. Um, so this is a piece I've got left over from the previous one, so this is going to go here. Um, and then also I need to just cut out a little bit there. Um, so what the um, the vaccine glue says to do is to paste it on the back um, and then stick the paper to that. Now what I've found when I've been doing this is the paper very quickly starts to curl even though I'm not applying a lot of glue um, and no matter how you stick it down you end up with a wrinkle and if you're pressing that wrinkle too much you end up with the sort of white crease that you've seen in the other ones. So what I'm going to do this time is I've got quite a nice wee area here so basically it's from there to that join. Um, so I'm going to actually paint the wood this time with the, the glue and then stick the paper to the glue and I've got myself a wee foam paint roller to try and it says on the instructions for this to well read the instructions it says um, get to the English ones brush sufficient adhesive over the entire paper position paper carefully and smooth out your bubbles with a small roller or tube remove any marks and the excess adhesive while wet with a damp sponge and a low drying well that's what I did with the other ones and you can see it kind of worked out and it kind of didn't so I really got nothing to lose trying it this way um, you do get oodles of this stuff um, I don't know if the camera sees that, but that's oh, down there. That's quite a full bottle. Um, this should be enough to do all the back scenes that I need to do on the uh, on the what do you call it the uh, the railway next door. All the scenes that you've seen. So it's um, ah, it's kind of it's clear and it's quite pliable, I suppose, or movable, whatever you want to say. So. I'm not exactly slapping it on, I mean I'm covering the surface, but I'm trying to well, I'm trying to make sure it's on the edges enough so it sticks on the edges, but I'm not I'm not soaking the wood in it. I mean I, I presume bubbles come from a bit that's not got as much glue as another bit. Is that what happens? Well, who knows? Right, I'll uh, I'll get the rest of this glued glued down, I'll get the rest of the glue on. Um and then I'll, I'll come back to the sticking, so just back in a minute. Right, that's when I got a decent coating on, of the glue on, as you can see. It may work quite fast for us, it does kind of start setting quickly. And once it, once the sort of paper's down, you put a bit of pressure on it, you're not getting the paper back up. So don't think you can stick it down and peel it up. So you kind of got to be accurate to start with. So this edge here, I know is perfectly straight from the way that I've cut the wood, because that was the edge of the sheet. So I know that that corner should be good. If I just put this down, oh, that's really tacky already. Now let's see if I can sort of roll this out a bit better than the last attempts. Doing it this way. Straight, super smashing great. Right, plan B. Well, uh, what is that? You know what? Let's just go with this edge. Right, let's get it lined up in the corner. Right. It's not going to be perfect. If anyone's looking for perfection, don't subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I do what I can with the skills that I've got. Right, so. It all went around clear as hell in the middle. Again. And even if you if you lift it and work it in the opposite direction, it doesn't it doesn't seem to change once this once this wrinkles, it's it's wrinkled, to be honest. 
it doesn't seem to matter. The one thing I have found is that if you're not too precious on the wrinkles, um, they can go away when the glue dries a little bit. Because trust me, the first one I did in this, I was cursing myself because it was it was awful um, to the point that I nearly ripped it off. But it stuck too much, and I thought, well, I can't do much with that now. Um, and I just left it, and it actually, once the glue dried, it looked smoother. So, um, all right, wrinkle free it is uh, to be quite honest. So, let me just I'll grab the camera, bring it down and show you this. So, uh, see if you can see it. Ah, there you go, there's the light catching the wrinkles. Oh, like I say, once, it's, once it goes like this, there just seems to be nothing you can do. Um, it just does it, and it doesn't matter how often you roll it. Sometimes I find if you just sort of squish it with your finger, it kind of goes away. Um, but if you put too much pressure on it, or if you roll it too much, it just, um, you get that white, uh, you know, basically the picture comes away. <sighs> so... Aye, like that. See, that's just folded there because that's drying, so I'm not going to do anything more with that. Alright, I'll leave that to dry, see what it dries like. What can you do? And then it's just a picture, isn't it? But it'd be nice if it didn't look like it had been wrinkled. Hey ho, alright, see what happens. Come back to you. Alright, it's, uh, it's the next day. Um, I've just left this sitting to dry. I charged on and, and finished the board. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can see from a distance it doesn't look too bad. Obviously, I've got the two lines there, you know, there's a joint that would have. I expected that. Uh, that was a compromise from um, basically saving money on having to buy extra wood by using the wood more efficiently, you know, so big deal. Um, I mean, it has dried. And the, the the creases have went away, so if I kind of tilt it to catch the light, you can see them just a little bit there. But it's nowhere near as bad as it was. And um, what I did with this sheet was I actually um, I did it the same. I, I I painted the glue on, but then I was um, braver, and I just uh, lined up the paper and went for it and rolled it down and just left it. And what you ended up with was like little areas like this of like little groups of bubbles rather than the big creases um, and again they kind of dry then you can just, that's probably the worst bit there on there so to be honest, I don't know what's what's worse, what's better uh, it's, uh, it's just one of these jobs that unless you're, you're brilliant at it you're always going to end up with some bubbles and some creases so I'm just going to crack on with the rest of it get it done, get it reinstalled and I'll, I'll show you it all in the way out. Alright, so back in a bit. Alright, that's, uh, that's all the backboard installed, or all the ones I want installed just now. Obviously I've still got woods to go up there, but I don't know what I'm doing with the scenery up that way, so that's getting left just now. Yeah, I'm reasonably pleased with it. Uh, certainly from a distance it looks okay. Um, there are bits that annoy me. Uh, this this bit in particular didn't go that well. Um, I didn't realise I had a sort of uneven bit between the boards, so I've got a big crease down there. And these two pieces just didn't meet up, no matter what I, what I did. So there's a wee gap there. Um, but uh, this side, which I thought would be the more complicated side, has, has worked out really well. Um, gap the joint there is brilliant. Um, over here, for this angle you can't really see it, but there's a slight gap if you come around here, so I'll need to try and figure something out for joining that up a little bit better. 
Um, I mean, there's bubble oils and wrinkles all over it. Um, anyone that can get this stuff on without it is clearly a master wallpaper. But um, yeah, I mean, it's as, as good as I can do. Um, it's not cost me much. The wood was about fifty pound, and the three sets of back scenes were another thirty pound. So eighty pound for all that, I suppose, is is pretty good. Um, and yeah, that, this bit looks silly, but bear in mind, there's going to be a hill coming up, and the plan is to basically just slice right through where the trees join the sky, and then it will go up into the corner. So you won't even see the the slight difference in blue. Um, and then it's going to come back down and slice through there again. So, right, it looks silly just now, but once the scenery is done, it will uh, it will hopefully all blend in. And certainly, this hillside here is the next the next bit I'm going to be working on. Um, you may have noticed I've uh, ballasted certainly all the way around here. Well, basically where the back scenes are, because um, I don't want to be spraying water and glue about once the back scenes are up. And I've cut the the platform templates um, ready to go for building the upper station so I've been, I've been pottering about doing all sorts of things but the back scenes was the main job um, so uh, thanks for watching let me know what you think and um, give me any comments you have any questions you've got um, and uh, subscribe to keep up to date with what's going on in the layout so thanks very much see you later bye